Mm. All right. Hey there, everybody. It's Leanne here with Nima once again, Dr. Nima Romani, who's a chiropractor and mental health optimization coach. And he helps people who are stressed, stuck, and sick to have the best year of their lives through his really unique and powerful method to helping you get aligned with your true self. So what that's spurred, true. Yeah. <laughs> what spurred this particular chat that we've been having was a post that Nima put on his, was it your personal Facebook feed? Yeah, it's my personal Facebook page. Yeah. And it was all about adrenal fatigue, which is something that I specialize in and I'm really passionate about just learning the ins and outs of this particular condition, this phantom illness. And there was some really great feedback and a lot of people that were really jiving and vibing with it. And then there was some that didn't agree with the message. And I thought this would be a really good opportunity for us to talk further about it and for you to be able to clarify what you meant by people not wanting to tell the truth and that they would rather stay in their illness rather than tell the truth. And I think that what we were just chatting about is there's a difference between blame and responsibility. So would you like to speak a little bit to that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's great to be here. Thanks for having me um, back. I love talking about this stuff. Like I could, we could literally, like we were having this conversation, we could literally be talking for hours about this. And it's so refreshing to have you be kind of a, 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 an adrenal fatigue um, expert uh, with a background in clinical counseling because, you know, you have your perspective and your education and your own personal experience with it. So it's like, oh, thank God, somebody who who's in that field who actually has lived it and has gone through the other side. So the comment that I made, the post that I made that ruffled a few feathers was really talking about people who have been diagnosed with adrenal fatigue. Um, the, the diagnosis itself basically is, is a, it's a form of burnout. It's a, it's basically your body is attempt. It, it, it's exhaustion. Your body is pushing a boulder up a hill for some reason, and the adrenals, which are your the adre- adrenal glands, which pump out your stress hormones, just become exhausted, adrenal fatigue. I mean, it's just, this is basically what happens. There's millions of people walking around undiagnosed. I mean, whether they're diagnosed or not, it, it, it just, it's, it's something so prevalent. It's pandemic. Yeah. And the symptoms of it are so common. You know, there's uh, uh, like, extreme amounts of fatigue, uh, inability to sleep as well, uh, anxiety, depression, digestive issues, hormonal issues. Um, If you allow it to progress for a long time, then you might get a blood test that shows your thyroid off or Hashimoto's or Addison's or whatever diseases that they diagnose you with. The problem with the diagnosis that I find is that it it excuses you. You go, oh, finally, I now know exactly what's going on. I have this problem. And so what ends up happening is <clears throat> what I've observed is that here's, here's from my observation. This will happen. I'm going to just use a case study as an example. Uh, two people get married. And when you get married, you have these fantasies of how things should be. And so because you fear the loss of that other person, you have them up on a pedestal, you start to withhold parts of yourself in fear of rejection, okay? So this withholding of yourself, of your true self, of what you'd really wanna say and who you really are, this, this belief that who I am is not enough, I don't wanna lose the approval of this person, comes from something way back in childhood, whether you made up story about dad cheated on your mother or mom and dad got divorced and based on these events or a trauma that happened when you were uh, a child and your uncle was uh, you know had 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 uh, had touched you or or molested you or something events like those things have happened and they leave an impact because we make a meaning out of them that pits us into a place of i'm not worthy of love i'm not good enough And then when we get into relationships, those unresolved things spill over into the relationship. We withhold our truth of who we truly are and try to play on this role that's not really who we are. And fast forward 5, 10, 15 years of pretending, eventually the body leads to a state of exhaustion. 
That totally okay. makes a ton of sense. Does that make sense? So I'm just giving you like a, oh, I've seen hundreds of cases and I'm kind of mixing and matching them together, but that really what, what, what sets the stage. Now, if you have this inauthenticity, this lie, this pretending, even though it's not conscious, it's buried, it's unconscious, okay? Um, whether it, you know, there's religion that throws in. I mean, one of my clients was, uh, you know, brought up in a very strict religious upbringing. Father was a pastor. So her father arranged a marriage with another young pastor. And so that wasn't really her, but she just wanted to be a good girl. And she did what she was told. And lo and behold, 10, 20, 30 years of that, she's got burnout anxiety, paralyzing anxiety, panic attacks, all of these symptoms that show up after years and years of lies and pretending and inauthenticity. And now we are, we now have a disorder. Now this is, this is the underlying stuff here. We now have a disorder. We now have a diagnosis. We now are in the medical system and we're going from doctor to specialist to doctor to specialist to naturopath to counselor to try to uh, excuse me, to, to naturopath, to try to medicate and to alter the, 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 the supplement and medication to try to play in this field over here. Yeah. And you could change chemical blood tests with, uh, with, with chemistry. Absolutely. I could put a chemical into my body that artificially lowers my blood pressure and I'm still in this realm, and then I do another test three months later, and the blood pressure is brought down a little bit, but is the person any healthier? Probably. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, because we're still playing in this realm. Now, you might say, okay, I'm tired of the medical system. I'm going to do, quote, unquote, the natural approach. So then you're still here, and then you're going to go get a homeopathy or naturopathy or an acupuncture or whatever, and you're still doing an outside-in type of remedy for something here. Right. Okay? Which you might get a change in the symptoms, which is great. But still, your set point, structurally, emotionally, this, this, this um, the, the, what they call the allostatic load, the amount of stress load, this boulder up a hill is still being pushed. You still haven't gotten to that inauthenticity. You still haven't gotten to those old stories that I'm not worthy of love. I'm not good enough. I'm not a good person. The guilt, the shame, the whatever, the confusion, all of that, that still you're the victim to. Right. And now this is here. And then I make a post on Facebook that says, guys, your, your adrenals aren't forsaking you, okay? There's a reason why you're pushing a boulder up a hill and doing all of this stuff, playing in this realm is not gonna help you. Stop lying, stop pretending, start telling the truth, start getting connected to who you are, start clearing those victim stories. And there's two types of responses. Response number one is, oh my God, spot on, thank you. <laughs> I really needed to hear this. You resonate with me. And response number two is, how dare you call me a liar? Are you saying this is my fault? And all of a sudden, the resistance comes up. Because if you have had a pattern of rejection, a pattern of, uh, of trauma, a pattern of, of victimhood that you're still unconsciously holding on to, then anything said on the outside, even an innocent Facebook post with the... With the, with the uh, honest intent of really waking people up yeah. and hoping that people will catch on and say, yes, I want to take responsibility, turns around and becomes a trigger that promotes their victimhood story that says, there's that Nima guy. He's got the dark features. He got, kind of looks like Justin Timberlake meets ISIS. <laughs> he, he, he looks all shady. He's very passionate. He talks really, you know, like you scare the shit out of me because you remind me of that guy that did what he did when I was 12 or 13. Boom. It happens all the time. It's the fun part of my job. So what, what, what I'm not saying that green smoothies aren't important. I freaking live them. I wake up at six in the morning and I do CrossFit. <laughs> Lifestyle is critical. Mm -hmm. you can, I mean, of course, we start there. Yeah. 
But here's the problem with only thinking it's just about the nutrition. It's just about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the supplements. Here's an interesting analogy that I learned from Bruce Lipton. If you look at a battleship and you look at the functions of a battleship, it's like the cell of a body. There is a, uh, a waste elimination. You know, they have uh, ships that come in that take the waste away. And then they have ships that come in and they deliver food. They have a kitchen, which is the digestion. You know, they have the security that, you know, they have the protection, they have the maintenance crew, all of that is working and functioning normally each and every day, right? But what happens when there's a red alert and all of a sudden that ship, they know there's a torpedo coming at them and it's under attack. Do they have the delivery guys coming in to work? Do they have the maintenance crew working? The kitchen is all, you know, making their food? No, everybody goes into shutdown mode, protective mode on high alert. And that's exactly what the cells of your body do when they are in a perception of threat. Mm. Rejection, uh, victimhood, uh, being triggered is a perception of threat. So I can drink all of these that I want, which is better than me having uh, fast food all the time. Yeah. However, if I have a perception of a threat because of an old story that's not been resolved, none of this is really going to get digested and assimilated properly. My body, my cells are not going to get the full, full uh, uh, effect of my lifestyle changes. And that's the only point I'm trying to make. It's not about assessing fault, but it's about taking responsibility for changing those stories. And that's what I absolutely love helping people do when they're ready. Yeah. And I absolutely resonate with all of that because it's been my personal journey. I lived it. I was doing all of the right things and my body was not healing. And it wasn't until I started doing the deeper, like getting real waking up stuff. And yeah, you, you were, you, Leanne, you probably would have noticed that those symptoms, okay, look at this, the symptoms that are going on and when they were at their worst, mm -hmm. how long ago was that? It's been a few years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Been a few years. Now, look at the relationships in your life at that time. With husband, with kids, with mother, with father, with aunt, with uncle, with, with teachers, mentors. Because what I learned was so huge, was critical, is that my life is all based on my relationships, how they're occurring. Totally. So if there is a lack of integrity in a relationship, a lack of authenticity, that's my life is broken. My health will break down to point out what needs work. That's powerful. That's really right. It, wake, it does wake you up. You have to pay attention, right? Exactly. That's why I left my chiropractic practice because patients were coming in with stress related disorders. But then when I would talk to them, I go, what's going on? They're like, oh my God, my sister and I haven't spoken for three months. I'm like, well, exactly. There's a broken, a lack of integrity with that relationship. Well, she did this. Okay, great. And there's a victim story too. So I just got sick and tired of actually not really helping people deal with the root cause. So I completely reject any client that wants to play victim. And I only work with people who want to be the cause in the matter of actually repairing first the relationship with self and then ripple effect onto the other outside world. So if you look at your life at the time, Leanne, can you see that a few years ago when your symptoms were at your worst, that there was incongruencies and lack of integrity with certain relationships in your life? Yeah, relationships and even um, with business and just, you know, not feeling like working as a, on the more clinical side as a counselor and feeling quite suffocated in that with my registration and having to follow certain, you know, parameters in that with the registration. I found it just, I had to almost like disconnect from a huge part of myself and my belief system and work with clients only in this certain realm. And that was really hard too. It just wasn't. Now. So here's the question that I have for you around that time when the adrenals were at their worst and you had that burnout, could you see that you had this identity crisis going on, this dichotomy of who am I? Am I supposed to follow and play by the rules or do I listen to my own inner voice? 
Yeah. Can you see it was the war of approval? Oh, huge in that, right? Totally huge because, so, yeah. Whether it's the governing board of the clinical counseling uh, group, or maybe you had some issues with hubby, or maybe your kid and you were disconnected, it's a relationship, identity, conflict right. at the root cause of most health disorders. And at the end of the day, what I discovered is that it is all about the war of approval. Mm -hmm. The war of approval will destroy and either destroy or rec reclaim your health, depending on how you garner and correct the mindset surrounding the issue inside of this, I want to fit in and be liked and be approved of. Because if I don't get... Uh, your approval, then I can't love myself. Yeah. And you know what uh, was a pattern that I saw in my six years of private counseling? I did practice as a holistic counselor. That was like one of the first, I've been one of the first in my community to actually, you know, portray myself in that light of being holistic. So I did branch out in that area. But one of the things that I would start to see is just people coming in with all these different issues and feeling like it just happened like out of nowhere, right? They're suddenly their health just went, you know, just all this happened within the last month. And it's like, the way I see it is there's this soil that's, that was sort of fertilized way back in childhood, as you mentioned, this is how I see it. Very yep. much in alignment. And then as you start living out those patterns in life where you've developed core beliefs of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy of these things. Um, you're in situations in your life that reflect that, and then your health just starts to show that, right? Well, I, I want to correct you. You're not in situations in life that reflect that. You gather evidence to support those beliefs. That makes sense. You start looking for it because you're in situations that are situations. We make the meaning out of it that we're not good enough. Right. Because it's, it's a pattern that we haven't resolved. And we haven't learned the tools and how to do that. So I left my chiropractic practice and I now just do that exclusively in one-on-one -on -one and group settings. And I just teach people how to become powerfully aligned so that they can take their transitional because it is transitional anxiety and stress because it was that transition from going from their counseling to the holistic, you know, the, 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 by the book to creatively, um, you know, being a creative healer on your own. And I know what that's like. Yeah. You don't think I was scared about going what was comfortable, a 15 year lucrative chiropractic career going into this kind of thing. You got to go through the void. It's transitional anxiety. And so what I do is I help people with those transition, whether they're going through a breakup, whether they're going through, as you did, a shift from a current paradigm of career into another one. So it's usually a relationship approval game that we're playing. And there is a way to powerfully transition so that you can get your health back, you can get your mojo back, and then you can, the lifestyle changes that you do, you'll have a why behind them, and then they'll really settle in and take, take hold. Because everybody knows what they should be eating, everybody knows that they should be exercising, but why don't we do it? Is because if you're holding on to a guilt, or a shame pattern, you don't feel worthy enough to, to, to put the right foods in. So you're going to sedate yourself with the wrong ones. It's so true. And this is the thing with, um, when I first started my journey and before counseling, I was in the fitness industry thinking that I wanted to work in that area, but I would attract women coming to me, telling me they're living off of rice cakes and chicken and protein powder and working out five days a week and not able to release any of the weight. Right. And then I would start talking to them about their lives and these light bulbs would be going off like there's something missing. Even though I, we are taught it's calories in, calories out, there's so much more to it. Like you're saying, you could be eating the perfect diet, but if there's other stuff conflicting with that, you're not going to have the results. The weight gain is an interesting one because if you're holding on to weight um, and you're doing everything right, uh, chances are, I mean, if you have high adrenaline and cortisol, cortisol causes you to you know, keep the weight on. Yeah. And if you have, there's an unconscious motive that a lot of people have to keeping the weight on. I had one client who did, who ate like perfect diet, vegan, just everything. But after her divorce, she wasn't able to keep, 
to take the weight off. Okay. She just gained a bunch of weight and no matter what she tried, she couldn't lose the weight. So, so we went into it and we did, we did sessions together. It turns out she got pregnant at the age of 20 with a guy that she didn't really, you know, had just known or dated for a couple, couple months. All of a sudden she gets pregnant, extremely religious background with Jehovah's witnesses. They turned around and her father basically said, that's it. You're getting married over this weekend. And she's like, okay, there's that war of approval because God forbid she didn't have the approval of family and church. That's a big one. War of approval. Okay. So she finds herself in a marriage that was kind of imposed upon her, which she didn't really love. She didn't, she didn't really love him. Right. And she knew that she had interests in other people. And so after her second kid, she just started putting on weight. And she realized that when we did the session, that the weight was an unconscious motive for her to not tempt herself with temptation and keep her family together because her highest values were family. Wow. So she knew that she could, could have strayed because she didn't really love him. She knew that she had this potential of, you know, really seeking love because she really loved, loved to be in love, wasn't with him. So she just kept putting on weight after weight after weight because she was unconsciously, her body was trying to protect the integrity of the family. Wow. And, that and, as, and as soon as she made that connection, it was this, <gasps> within two weeks, two weeks, she lost 15 pounds. It's probably a lot of it. I've heard of this. You probably have too, is like emotional weight, right? It's like the moment you're able to get into that aligned place and it just makes sense. Everything clicks. And that's the thing is like, it's different for everyone. That's why these weight loss books and these nutrition manuals and these lose 10 pounds in 20 days and all this crud that is out there is so frustrating. And for the majority of people, it's not effective. I would say there are some people that nutrition and exercise is how they stay slim and fit and everything else. But there's a lot of people that need a lot more than that. So that leads me into. And yeah. Every, everybody wants to be thin and rich, <laughs> but very few people are willing to do the necessary mindset work to get themselves aligned with the, with the congruency of the becoming of that. And that's what I love helping people with. I love that. So to wrap this up, that's what I would like to actually ask you to dig into a little bit more is um, if someone is doing the nutrition and they're doing all these things we've talked about here of the holistic and they're in the, you know, they've maybe got their doctors in there and their naturopaths and they're doing all the things that are, and they're doing, and they're doing yoga they're taking their yoga their classes. Yep. Having their kale and they're not seeing any result. How would someone know, you know, that, you know, maybe I need to look deeper into something else that's going on. How would someone know that? Good question. What you do is you ask this question. When did the symptoms begin? Kind of like I asked you. Yeah. So when did your symptoms begin, Leanne? I mean, honestly, back in my teens. <laughs> Great. And then they were flared up. Um, and they were flared up just recently, like a few years ago, they were at their worst too, right? Yeah. It kind so of you'll notice. Yeah you'll notice they kind of this exactly good point they kind of go like this duh why you'll notice that they go like this during very conflicting trying times when you're battling the war of approval and so if you go back to your time in your teens i guarantee you you were fighting another war of approval at that time hmm that's interesting Think about that. So a few years ago with the whole, you know, whether, whether there would be family stuff going on or whether there'd be the, the stuff with the counseling people. Okay. That's one. What about in your teens? Let me guess. Let me, let, 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 hey, let me take a wild guess here at Leanne. I've never, never dealt with this before. Let me take a wild guess. Could it be anything to do with a guy? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> And I don't even know. We've never done a session, right? So I don't even know. But you're like, it happened in my teens. I just don't know why. Well, a beautiful young gal with, you know, who takes good care of herself. I guarantee that you didn't have any problems attracting boys, but 
you probably had this conflict of this approval and wanting to be liked and why isn't he giving me the attention and why is he treating me this way? And the fantasy that you had about the relationship wasn't being met. You made a story about it and you were fighting the war of approval and boom, the adrenals just went through the roof because you weren't being real. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really interesting. And that's a very, very good example of why someone would be doing all of the things that look good on paper but it's not getting them anywhere because that underlying stuff is just there in the background. And it's like, that's just take all, take all the supplements you want, do all the yoga classes. But if you're not going back to that event, if you're not going back and really dismantling all of the delusions and the lies and the stories, you will be carrying them with you from person to person to relationship. And I guarantee you some of it spills over into your marriage. Guarantee you that it spills over into your children. I just want to show people, waking people up to this is a very, very triggering thing because the ones, there's two types of people, people who hear this and go, Oh my God, he's talking about me. How do I fix this? My life is at stake. I want to do this. And then type number two that goes, how dare you? Right. How dare you? It is not my fault. I was in an abusive relationship for 30 years. He was a monster. And then I go, and then I go, oh my God, there's a classic victim story, but this is going to fly in the face of your counseling background. It's going to be very, very confronting and conflicting, but my certainty exceeds your doubt in this is that the person who yells and screams about their 30 year abusive relationship where I was heavily abused for years is not understanding that the oppressed and the oppressor are, are an energetic match for each other. It's not like you go out on a date and the first date, you know, the person slaps you across the face. It develops because you don't have this strength and this powerful alignment that you feel so unworthy that you can't stand up and say, no, that's not appropriate. Or yeah, if you do that again, then we're not together. In other words, you have a greater fear of actually being alone than being in a relationship with somebody who treats you the way that you feel about yourself. And I totally who, believe that. I really who's, do. Who's actually treating you an exact energetic match for how you feel about yourself. That's amazing. So there's two, there's responsibility there. There's a responsibility. What I'm saying is it's not a fault or a blame game. It's a responsibility. And I only work with people who go, yeah. I'm willing to step up and take responsibility. And that's I see it as it's, it's about personal responsibility, right? It's like, not like you're responsible for this in my situation. It's about personal responsibility. Like what part did I play in that dynamic? Right. That's more of an yeah. empowering way to look at it. Right? right. Right. If I'm in a relationship with you, you're responsible for your own triggers. I mean, I could do something very innocent and that will trigger you. You're responsible for that, but I'm responsible for how I react and respond. Okay. I'd love to ask you a question about this because this is actually something me and my husband have been doing because I am trying to say, you know, like same, you know, same mentality, but I'm responsible for my triggers. But what if it's something that one does in a relationship that one has said, no, that's not okay with me. I don't like that. Or could you do it this way instead? And that keeps happening and it keeps triggering. Who's at good point, right? What if good the pattern point. keep going and the person is doing the right thing by standing up for themselves and being assertive and it continues. So in my relationship, that's a good question. In my relationship, I'm very careful to say, to, 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 to be aware of when I'm saying this, don't do that because when you're do, when you do that, you know, that triggers me <laughs> and I don't want you to trigger and confront it because I don't want to be confronted with those feelings. So I'm going to ask and request that you stop doing those things because it triggers me. When I find myself telling her to not do things because it triggers me, that's a sign that I need to do the work on it. Hmm. So then it's not so, cause I teach people about assertiveness and standing up for themselves and being empowered and saying, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with making a request. Yeah. However, simultaneously, I believe 
that it's wise for to 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 powerfully align myself with the highest version of myself so that I can I cannot be I can take a look at my triggers as as things that I would be wise to work on within myself. And as long as you have a system, I've created a system of working on triggers. Everyone's like, do the work. Well, what does that look like? Talk to a counselor? No, talking to a counselor for six months to a year. Sorry, no offense to you. You are a counselor. It doesn't really serve uh, you if you want to resolve the issue. It serves the counselor as a business model to keep you stuck on a victim story for for a whole year, which will be very confronting to a lot of counselors. I get that. I understand. I'm, I'm very certain about this. I've seen this is that if you learn the tools, you can learn the tools. Uh, you know, you find somebody who's really wanting to see the highest version of you outside of the whole victim story, outside of the victim story, because as long as you're holding on to the victim story, he's triggering me. He knows that that's not right. And so, yes, make a request and let them know that the trigger is there and this is what's going to happen likely, but that doesn't take me away from the responsibility of doing the work on it. Of course, so that, otherwise you're just going to go around all over the place being triggered by everything and everyone. One of the things that I teach around this is teaching uh, women to come back into their bodies when they feel triggered and to do like an inner inquiry. And one of the top things, a place to start is like, where have I felt this before? Yeah. And where is this situation similar to something maybe I experienced when I was three or four? Yeah, yeah right? totally. And that's exactly part of the overview. It's not a, if, when you tell your husband, don't do that, it really gets, gets me going. You've basically handed him your power. Yeah, totally. And I totally, totally love that. I just, that was one area that, you know, going deeper into it, cause we're both practicing that. Like if we're both responsible for our own trigger. Yeah. But then you kind of get into this thing. It's like, yeah, but I've asked you to stop doing that. And you keep doing it. <laughs> and don't, don't ever, ever expect to never be triggered because we're human beings. It's just, you're just graduating to, to greater levels of complexity, greater levels of awareness, greater levels of understanding. And the role of a relationship isn't to make you happy. It's to help hold a mirror of parts of you that you haven't yet loved. Yeah. You haven't yet embraced. And so when you can look at each other as partners, as, as teammates in your own personal growth, and you can shed these fantasies of happily ever after, then you can really become more grateful for what is. And you can, you can uh, shortcut the, the time frame of suffering. Yeah. Okay, you know what, I'm, I'm more interested in, in, in the resilience and when you have a breakdown, how quickly you can jump back in rather than being, rather than having this long standing suffering. So I just, that's really my, the funnest thing for me to teach because it permeates your health, permeates your relationships, permeates your finances, your career, your social life, everything. And so I'm working on mastering all of that. We, all, we could probably do a separate call just about relationship health. Oh my goodness. Because we're talking about stress here and I'm all about, let's get real about what the hell is causing all of this stress and being in a relationship that's, you know, both people aren't really willing to do the work and kind of grow through things can be highly stressful, right? So each person taking personal responsibility for how they show up is a way to work through those things rather than have them. 100%. Yeah. I just love talking to you, hon. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So awesome. So where can people go once again to find you, Nima? If you just, uh, if you're interested, the people who are actually, if what I said triggers them and, and they're not ready, don't worry about it. Don't go to the link. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't go to the link. Um, but on my website, drnima.com, I have a live, a, a free training on how to transition, how to transition more powerfully on transitional anxiety. So it's drnima.com, D-R-N-I-M-A.com. If you actually are ready and you're like, okay, I'm ready to start feeling better and trans transform this, you go to bepowerfullyaligned.com slash apply. And you, we have a conversation. And I um, see if you're ready to del deep dive and, and really resolve this and start to feel better and get your power back and to resolve and restore integrity to your relationships and then have a mission statement and a purpose statement that is, is, is truly resonating with you and living powerfully aligned and on purpose. So that's bepowerfullyaligned.com slash apply. I think you can leave a link there. 
Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And if this, we'll put this up in our YouTube so that you can put your links underneath. And yeah. And by all means, join my Facebook group, the art of powerful alignment. That's the best way to gain access and more information. I do live trainings in there all the time. So uh, the art of powerful alignment, as you know, I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. So alignment is huge. So the art of powerful alignment. I like that play in words. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Nima, thanks right. so much. Bye-bye.